you need to do these three things to make your first $10,000 in decentralized finance. Now I wanna briefly explain what decentralized finance is. This system is just like traditional finance. It's a brand new financial system that builds on top of TradFi. It's just the difference is it eliminates the needs for banks, payment processors, and any intermediary. Basically, that means that you can send money to your friend directly through a wallet address. It does not have to go through a bank and then go to your friend's bank. It could go just straight to their wallet address. Now, on top of that, decentralized finance allows you to have self-custody of your assets and hold your own private keys. That's what a ledger wallet known as a hardware wallet, as well as a cold wallet is used for. This little device right here stores all my private keys that allow me to access my wallet on the blockchain. And of course, my assets are stored directly on the blockchain. Because just like crypto, when you have a dollar in your custody, it is rightfully yours. And if somebody wants to take it, they literally have to steal it from you. Well, the same exact thing goes with crypto. If somebody wanted to steal my crypto, they would have to steal this device. And of course, enter my passcode and all of that information. Now we have another video breaking down what exactly DeFi is and how this financial system works. But to hop into this one on how you can make your first $10,000, I want to introduce myself. I'm Jake Call. I'm the founder of a company called Builder Wealth, and we help people establish DeFi passive income streams. That means that we let leverage opportunities that are in the decentralized finance space to earn a passive income on our assets. Now, I've personally been in the decentralized finance space for about three years by now, and I've been buying crypto for over six years since I was 13 years old. Now, I've always been super passionate about this space, and I've learned to make a full-time income off of decentralized finance as well as cryptocurrency over these past few years. But with that being said, there are three different main ways to make money within cryptocurrency as well as decentralized finance. The first one is buying and holding, and this is probably what most of you guys do. You guys probably end up buying some cryptocurrencies and just holding them in your wallet, waiting for them to rise in price and then selling them at a higher price or maybe even selling them at a lower price. And this is great and all, but one thing I like to say is it's in the name. Cryptocurrency is meant to be an alternate form of currency. Yes, it is relatively volatile right now, so you can buy and sell when it's at a higher price. But eventually, a lot of these currencies will get to a point where they're somewhat stable. And I'm not talking tomorrow or the next month or the next year. I'm talking about 10 years from now or 15 years from now. These cryptos like Ethereum, Bitcoin, Matic, so on and so forth will be stable assets or at least somewhat stable assets. So the next way to make money in cryptocurrency and DeFi is something called trading. And this is where you're trading futures contracts or trading options or something along those lines. Very, very similar to how you can go long and short on a stock or of course where you can go and buy and sell options, but it's in the cryptocurrency space. You could trade something called perpetual futures, and this essentially allows you to use leverage to make money on cryptocurrencies. Taking a look at a long position example, assume that you're trading Ethereum and your open price is $1,000 per Ethereum token. You only have to put up $100 to access one Ethereum token in that trade. That's because you can use 10x leverage. Now, in the case that you close your position at, let's just say $2,000 per Ethereum token, well, then you just made $1,000 right there. And the way that works is because you have a notional value of $1,000 thousand dollars in ethereum doubled in price going to two thousand dollars which means that you get to keep that one thousand dollars in profit but let's just say the price of ethereum went down from a thousand dollars to nine hundred dollars well then you would have just lost one hundred dollars right there and that's because you're using 10x leverage so your returns are amplified by 10 times so if you have a 10 percent loss that's not a hundred percent loss if you have a 10 percent gain it's now a hundred percent gain and of course if you use isolated margin you can only lose the amount that you put into the position which is nice now you can also use short positions which allow you to make money on the way down. So for example, if you have a position right here with an open price of a thousand bucks, it goes down to 900 bucks. You have hundred dollars on margin and 10 X leverage. Well then right here, you would have just made a hundred dollars instead of just making $10. And you guys can do more research on long and short positions for perpetual futures in DeFi. But of course you get the point here. Now, another way that you can make money in decentralized finance, which I personally think is the best way to make money in DeFi is something called yield farming. And yield farming is essentially where you take your current assets, your cryptocurrencies, and you start to earn a yield on them. You go invest them into liquidity pools. You go and you start staking your assets. You start running different strategies with your assets. That is what yield farming is. Now, before you go any further, I want to mention that Builder Wealth, we put out a ton of free resources to help guide you in the DeFi space. We just put out a DeFi passive income guide, which is going to teach you everything you need to know about getting started in DeFi. I recommend you check it out. It's down below in the description for free. I want to take a look at an example called a liquidity pool. This is where you are facilitating trades on decentralized exchanges. 
Remember, in the crypto space, people want to buy Matic, people want to buy Ethereum, people want to buy Bitcoin, so on and so forth. They also want to sell it. So they're going to go on something called a decentralized exchange. Now, the most popular decentralized exchange at the time of recording this video is Uniswap. Uniswap allows you to swap one asset for another asset. So for example, I can swap Ethereum for USDC. So at current price, if I swap one Ethereum right now, which is currently worth 1844, I'm going to get 1842 USDC. The reason why I'm losing about $2 right here is because I'm paying the liquidity providers a $2 fee right here. And when people are executing billions of dollars in volume every single month, these fees start to add up. So how this system works is there's something called a liquidity pool that contains two assets. It contains Ethereum and it contains USDC. And this is exactly what facilitates trading because on one hand, you're going to have somebody that is a trader. They're going to go ahead and put in, let's just say Ethereum, and they're going to take out USDC. But remember, if the dollar value of the Ethereum that they're putting in is, let's just say 1844, they're taking out about 1842 USDC because they're going to pay that slight fee. And that fee is going to go to the liquidity provider. If they're swapping their Ethereum for USDC, which is basically termed as if they're buying USDC with Ethereum, they're paying that fee in Ethereum. Whereas if it's vice versa, they're swapping their USDC for Ethereum, meaning they're buying Ethereum with USDC, they're going to be paying that fee in USDC. And as a liquidity provider, we're going to get whatever they pay. So this is exactly how the system works. We put in both Ethereum and USDC into the liquidity pool. The trader then will trade from it. They'll be able to put in one asset and take out the other asset or so on and so forth and pay that very, very small fee. So as a liquidity the provider, we have to be willing to take on exposure to either Ethereum or USDC. We have to take on exposure to both. So it wouldn't be ideal for me to provide liquidity for Ethereum as well as USDC if I don't care about Ethereum or if I'm bearish on Ethereum, because right here I have long exposure to Ethereum. And one thing to be aware of in liquidity pools is something called impermanent loss. Impermanent loss is simply opportunity cost. For example, if they put in their Ethereum and they take out USDC, we are now stuck with more Ethereum than USDC. And that's exactly where I'm permanent loss comes into play. We have plenty of videos breaking that down on the channel as well. We're not going to dive too deep into it. Now in DeFi, there's also something called staking. And this is simply where you are putting your assets in the savings account, basically. And that's because with staking, where you're supporting the decentralization of a network and you're delegating your tokens to a validator, you are getting a simple return for helping support the decentralization of the network. In this case, Lido is the largest decentralized finance staking platform. You can go and stake your Ethereum, you can stake your Matic, and you could stake your Sol. If we stake Ethereum, we're getting about 3.8%. We do not have impermanent loss. We don't have any risk there. Our only risk is price risk of Ethereum going down in price, as well as just Lido platform risk. But keep in mind, Lido is the largest decentralized finance platform out there right now. So yes, while we do have risk, they are very, very minimal. Staking is the least risky of all, in my personal opinion, in decentralized finance. But of course, since we are taking on less risk here, we are going to get a low yield. Whereas in liquidity pool, since we're taking on a higher risk, we are going to get a higher yield. And the reason why you are getting this yield here is because of course, you are what keeps the network decentralized. A little throwback to our DeFi video, if there are people all around the world staking and hosting validators and hosting nodes that support the decentralization of the Ethereum network, it ultimately makes the Ethereum network more decentralized. So of course, whenever a server goes down or whenever somebody takes their validator down, there's all the other validators to back up the Ethereum network and keep the Ethereum network decentralized. That is exactly why you're getting a 3.8% return in this case. You are helping that be made possible. Now, another concept in DeFi is something called lending and borrowing. This is where you can collateralize your assets and of course, borrow against your collateral. The top lending to borrowing platform is called Aav. Over here, you can put up certain assets as collateral and borrow different assets. So for example, if I was just planning on holding Bitcoin and I don't want to go invest into any yield farms or anything like that, I just want to simply earn a little bit of a revenue stream off of it. I can go and put my Bitcoin up as collateral. So say I have one Bitcoin, I could put that up as collateral, aka lend it out, and then I can go and borrow different assets. So I could go and borrow USDC and with that USDC, I can buy up some altcoins hoping for them to rise in price. Or of course, I can go and borrow USDC and put my USDC into different stablecoin liquidity pools or yield farm with that USDC to earn a yield on it. That way I'm indirectly earning a yield on my Bitcoin. I'm maximizing my capital efficiency and making sure that I am actually getting a return on my Bitcoin as opposed to not getting any return whatsoever. This is a very, very simple concept. The lender deposits assets into the lending and borrowing platform and the borrower can borrow assets from the lending and borrowing platform. But the thing is people can't just go and borrow money without putting up any collateral 
collateral. They have to go and they have to put up collateral into the lending and borrowing platform in order to be able to borrow assets. And of course, let's just say their borrow starts to exceed their collateral, which either means that their collateral went down in value or their borrow went up in value, then they could potentially get liquidated, which means that their collateral would be sold in order to make sure that there is no bad debt on the platform. So these are three different methods to make your first $10,000 in decentralized finance. Obviously, these are very, very broad methods, but I recommend diving a little bit deeper into them as well as dropping a like and subscribing to the channel to learn more about some of the opportunities in the space. If you enjoyed today's video, I hope to see you guys actually subscribe when notifications turned on so you don't miss out. But I also hope to see you guys in the next video. So peace out.